In academia, you either publish or perish. But the thing is that the best Scopus Index journals reject between 70 and 90% of the submitted papers. That's why in this video, I'll show you a proven plan to publishing three papers so that you can become a go-to authority in your field, advance your career, and make a real impact with your research without working 60 or more hours every single week, even if you're writing your very first paper. And there are four steps to that plan. Each of them builds on the previous step, and we've tested it with over 400 PhD students and researchers at Academic English Now, helping them publish multiple papers in Scopus Index journals. If you want to get these results, it's crucial that you follow these four steps in the order I'm going to present them to you. Let's get to the first point. Did you know that most PhD students and researchers work 50 to 60 hours every single week? That's 10 to 12 hours, five days a week, or eight hours every single day, including holidays, Sundays, and your birthday. No wonder that 47% of those PhD students and researchers feel constant stress, and 32% do not sleep well. This is the price most of you are paying for wanting to publish regularly in really good journals. But it doesn't have to be like this. I did my PhD in three years with three published papers without feeling stress or without losing sleep and without working weekends. How? Through implementing step one, long-term planning. You see, the other day, one of our clients on Published Researcher was feeling very stressed. Deadlines were looming, she had too many projects to finish at the same time, and she was just feeling really overwhelmed about everything. It's understandable she felt very stressed. And while this is very common among researchers and PhD students, there is a simple but powerful solution to it. You need long-term planning. First, you need a big, bold vision. What is it that truly drives you? For example, I want to empower researchers to express the scientific ideas with confidence so that they can make a real contribution to science and society. Next, you want to set a big, bold goal for the next five to 10 years. Think for yourself, where is it that you wanna be in the next five or in the next 10 years? For me, I want to help 100,000 PhD students and researchers publish papers in Q1 Scopus Index journals. Now that you have that big, bold vision and you have your big goal for the next 10 years, you need to start breaking that goal into yearly goals. For example, for myself, year one could be building the absolutely best service on the planet to help PhD students and researchers publish papers. Once you have your yearly goals, you want to break them down into quarterly goals. And those quarterly goals need to lead directly, step by step, into your yearly goal. Think of them as a staircase, where each step, each goal, leads you directly into your final big, bold vision. And then you break up those quarterly and semester goals to monthly goals. And again, the monthly goals are basically like steps on a staircase that leads you to quarterly goals, which then leads you to yearly goals, which then leads you to your big, bold goal that you wanna achieve in 10 years. And then you have weekly goals, and then you have daily actions. Again, each of which leads you directly to the monthly, quarterly, yearly, and 10-year goals. And while you're doing this, it's really key to always keep that big, bold vision and goal in your mind, because your mind will love to be distracted and you'll be really, really tempted to take on other projects and do other stuff that doesn't necessarily contribute to your monthly, yearly goal, let alone to your big, bold vision. So if you start saying yes to all those other side projects, requests from colleagues, from your boss, meetings, conferences, you will quickly get very inundated and start feeling overwhelmed and you will get derailed, which means that your true goals will take a back seat and your carefully crafted plan will start falling into pieces. And you will either have to work 60 or more hours every single week to achieve your goals, or you'll have to give up on your goals. That's why you always have to ask yourself, does this thing that my mind wants me to do or other people want me to do actually move the boat forward towards my goal, or does it not move the boat forward? 
If it does not move the boat forward, then just say no to this and don't do it. And if it does, then do it. This will allow you to focus on way fewer things, which means that you can work less, achieve your goals faster and feel happier and more satisfied. Now, the next step has everything to do with cars and how they were produced back in the 20th century. At that time, cars were an unaffordable luxury and they were also pretty much unreliable and took forever to build. So most people still traveled on horses. But this man, Henry Ford, changed everything. How? He basically created an assembly line that allowed him to produce more cars much faster, make them more reliable and make them cheaper. And in just seven years, one million Model T's were produced. Now you want to think about your research goals and your research topics and your research papers in exactly the same way that Henry Ford thought about cars. What you need to do is standardize the production and create an assembly line for your research topics and for your research papers. And the first step here is to build a pipeline of high impact research topics. At any given time, you want to have at least five high impact research topics that you can be working on in the future. This is crucial because it will help you with the long term vision and long term planning of your research career and your research papers. And if you're curious how you can create that high impact pipeline and find high impact topics regularly, then I've got a free training exactly on that. And to access that training, you just need to head to our free published research community. The link is in the description. Then if you go to the classroom, you'll be able to see a training on finding high impact topics and building a high impact topic pipeline. Now that you've got a list of amazing topics that you can work on that will get you published in amazing journals, you need to still conduct these studies and gather the data and do all that. And this is where I think a lot of researchers and PhD students get it wrong because you might be equating impactful studies with a really complicated methodology that takes forever to carry out. This means that you know, your data collection process will be really long. You might need to learn some complicated data analysis techniques, which means that everything slows down and you might never publish the papers that you want to publish. But the truth is that you can publish in great journals with a very simple study design. For example, this study was published in a journal that is in the top 10 out of 1088 journals in language and linguistics. But the methodology for that study is very, very simple. In essence, it involved counting course book authors to see which country they came from and which language they spoke as the first language. It's so simple, probably a five year old could carry it out, but it got published in one of the best journals in my field. So when thinking about the design of your future studies, don't overcomplicate it. You want something that's easy to conduct, but proven. So consider the feasibility of the study, consider how long the data collection will take, consider if you can do it yourself or if you will need assistance from other people and consider whether you need to learn new techniques or not. And the trick is to choose a study design that's simple, but at the same time has been proven to work by other researchers in sometimes in other fields or in your own field. An approach tip, try to choose a design that has been proven to work outside of your field and has not been used yet in your field, because this will really add to the novelty and the impact of your study. But at the same time, it will also ensure that your study design is proven. But this still leaves the elephant in the room actually writing these papers. To help us do this, let's go back to Henry Ford for a second. When building each new exemplar of Model T, do you think Henry Ford started from scratch on each new example? Or did he have a proven blueprint that he used to make more of those models? You see, before Ford came on the scene, each car was made separately from separate pieces, each of which was also made individually by individual workers. There was no blueprint and there was no real standardization in place. This, of course, meant that each car was completely unique, which is great, but it also meant that each car was very unreliable and prone to a lot of errors because of a complete lack of any sort of standardization. On the other hand, Ford used pre-made pieces and an assembly line. 
This meant that the process was much faster and smoother and there were fewer errors because the workers building the cars were working with standardized pieces and there was a standardized procedure for how to build each car. And you want to follow Ford's process when writing research papers. Rather than treat each new paper as completely different, that needs to be assembled from completely different pieces, each of which is built completely from scratch, you need to create a proven blueprint and a procedure for writing the paper and putting all the pieces of the paper together. This will allow you to reduce your writing time from months to literally weeks, like Helen here, who did her complete systematic literature review in just 42 days. And to help you do this, I actually have a blueprint like this that you can download completely for free and use so that you can write your next paper much faster, much more reliably and publish it in a really good journal. You just need to head to our free published researcher community. The link is right in the description. And then at the top of the feed, you will see a pinned post with the blueprint and you can just download it for free. Now, if you implement this system step by step, you will publish three or more papers in the next 12 months. The danger though, is that you might end up working 60 or more hours every single week, like over 50% of early career researchers. Fortunately, there's a proven system that allows you to publish more while working less. And I'll show you exactly how that system works in this next video. I'll show you the ultimate hack to massively reduce your working hours while massively increasing your research output, freeing up your weekends and your time for things that truly matter, such as your hobbies, family, and friends. So watch this next video if you want to publish more while working less.